Dignitaries and delegates, hello and welcome to this fascinating fireside conversation on films and tourism with what, what should I say, uh, the global star of the Academy Award winning film RRR and many other things. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it deserves a big round of applause over again. You know, I have to say this, I'm pretty sure over the past six months, you got tired of talking about the Oscar fever, you know, that the RRR, you know, put the whole world through. And we were so excited watching this development from here in India. So you will have to excuse me because I will have to ask you this, which is, what was it like going through the whole Oscar campaign in the United States of course, which is a G20 member country, in Japan, where you also went uh, and to move to the film, which is another G20 country. I mean, what was that craze? What did you see? Uh, what did you make of it? What did you learn? Firstly, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, to all my G20 friends and all the dignitaries, and my special thank you to Krishnanji, our tourism minister, and all the dignitaries who are here, and Dabhanji, and Mr. Arvind, who has taken the pleasure to invite me. All of you, thank you so much for having me. Shaker, thank you for having me. I never get tired <laughs> talking about I usually they say, let's talk less about our achievements, but RRR is so special. I shy away from talking about my achievements. I feel like a third person when somebody is talking about our achievements. I feel like I'm listening about something else, somebody else. That's how detached I am with my work, but not with RRR. RRR is not just my film, it has become India's film. Indian people have owned it and I want to correct my statement, it's not just India, people from the East and the West and the North and the South, all the countries have owned it. My dear friend, the Korean ambassador is here, I've seen your video, sir. Thank you so much. What a tribute <laughs> to RRR. It is not our song anymore. Fantastic, so right after the session, I am excited to have a dance off with you. So, like I'm saying, it's not my movie, it's not my song, it's not my Academy Award, it's not my director, my composer who won it, it's the people who won it, it's the people who have taken it to the Academy, it's to the Golden Globe. And for me to uh, get, uh, have an opportunity to talk about it again, it's not about talking about me, it's talking about the people and people's love for the song. But tell me something. Uh Ram, I mean, of course, we mentioned the fact that it's, you know, it's box office figures are very well known. It's 1,200 crore, as was rightly pointed out at the beginning of this conversation. But hey, we are looking at a film that became the most watched international film in the history of Netflix. And pretty much everywhere you look, someone or the other is dancing to Natu Natu. And you've already said you're going to be doing it in the end. So I'm going to put, you know, uh, take your word for it. <laughs> What explains this unique and universal connect to this particular film in, a, in an international way, in a way that everyone in the world could see and just be drawn to it? Shrikar, I really don't know what it is and what it takes to make a song like this and take an award on, uh, in Hollywood or LA going to those Golden Globes. I really don't know. When I did the song, we shot this song for 17 odd days when I talk about that song, my knees still wobble. <laughs> I get knee pains. So, I don't know. When you do, you just do it. And you do it for the passion of the song. And I swear to God, none of the team members knew it was going to reach. We were so happy for what the appreciation we got in India. The highest grosser, the highest grossing film in India. We were more than happy and I actually moved on to my next project. And then we got a call saying some theatres, the Chinese theatre in LA, some audience are really appreciating your film. I said, okay, good, 250, 350 people, 650 people in one theatre enjoying it. And that became viral. And we've been getting calls from 
the best studios, the best friend, film friends from uh, the other industry, and wow, that's uh, now, now I, I couldn't stop it. So you just like took it because it's just happening the way it is, and like, you, there's no point in thinking and redoing this in any case, right? It is, it is what it was. Well, the, did you have a crazy fan moment? Did you like look at this person and go, what's going on here? It's 95 years since our industry has begun. Mm -hmm. It took 95 years for our Indian film industry to get that recognition internationally. I'm just proud of that fact that the West or the East have taken interest, interest in our films and our emotion, which is so rooted to our culture, our traditions, not aping any other country's uh, feelings or emotions. This is a true Indian director true Indian producer, a true Indian actor, a true Indian emotion. And this went across the globe, achieved what it achieved. I'm just proud. I thank my director for doing this. It is not a Hollywood studio hiring us as uh, actors right. and casting us. No, this is a pure Daisy film. Mm -hmm. Which makes complete sense. It also became, in every way, uh, the global face of India to its cinema uh, through those months uh, and through RRR of course. Now I'm just wondering if you were to meet and you did meet so many filmmakers from across the globe when you were uh, out there in the US uh, and other countries as well. If you were to invite filmmakers from across the world to this country to come and shoot, especially someone who's been in films for so long, what would the place, where would you start from? What kind of places would you, would you definitely tell filmmakers from across the world to come and shoot here? What are the cool places that you've shot at? God, I've shot uh, in many countries, from the east to the north. I've shot in Iceland. Right. The coldest, coldest. But the coolest place you shot here in India? In oh, India? Yeah. So if you were to invite filmmakers you know, from around the world. It is so cliche right now if yeah. I say this. Mm. You won't believe. I swear to God, please guys, don't take me from this world. Kashmir is that kind of a place. I've been coming here because my dad is in the same industry. He's been uh, working as an actor since 45 years. So I'm the second generation in my family. I was coming here since I was uh, probably uh, 86, 1986. I've been, that's the first time I visited Kashmir. My dad has shot extensively in Burmar, Sonmar. All these beautiful areas. I used to come as a child. It used to be something, if I was invited by my dad to Kashmir, it used to be like I have achieved something that summer, in the summer holidays. It's like an achievement. And you not believe I have shot in this auditorium in 2016, in this uh, beautiful auditorium in Kashmir, a uh, movie called Dhruva, where I play a uh, Polish academy uh, who's a uh, car. Uh, 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 graduating out of a, a police academy. I've shot in this, I've sat in that chair and I've shot. And this place has something magical. It draws people, it draws the attention of people. And no matter what we hear about Kashmir or whatever, this is such a surreal feeling when you come to Kashmir. It's been 95 years Indian film industry has begun. It will take another 95 years to explore Kashmir, let me tell you that. It's that beautiful. In one lifetime, as a tourist, living, or sorry, as an Indian, and I feel I come to do Kashmir as a tourist, because it's something I look up to. Wow, my dad is taking me to Kashmir, that means I've, I've done something good. This is a beautiful, untapped place. And I also, slightly feel people don't tap it too much because it is so raw, it is so virgin, it is so unkept. So untap, I want this beautiful paradise on earth to remain like this. Sometimes there are some beautiful forest reserves in India from the north to the south and most of it we speak and most of it is unknown and especially in Andhra Pradesh, we have this Sri Shalom forest, Amrabad. It's got the biggest tiger reserve. 65 plus tigers we have. It is the largest tiger reserve in India. And my wife works with the tribals and the community there to keep them occupied, not to indulge themselves in helping the poachers, 
giving them a job, the, uh, what do you say, the, the, community, the cultural uh, things they had, making uh, 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 wax, uh, candles out of the beef, uh, honeys and the wax that it comes out of it, giving them a, 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 some kind of a job to continue and have them earn money. This is very important. I used to tell my wife, why don't you construct a beautiful restaurant like uh, Rampanbor Forest or Kaziranga, Jim Corbin, she said, I was begging the government not to do anything here because the tigers are so peaceful in these tiger reserves that the tourists should not come and disturb us. We have such beautiful reserves. Now, did I speak against the tourism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so long as you keep that distance, right? I think that you can do both tourism and sustainability. Um, as uh, Minister Singh uh, pointed out, and I didn't realize he's an absolute encyclopedia of Hindi cinema. Uh, he really wants you. That's good. This is more than 95 years, yeah. It's been 110 years. Right. Well, yes. 1930. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and he wants you, and I think he's seen you uh, moving your legs. The only other person who could do it was Shami Kapoor. So I guess you played a cop last time. You'll have to do the Natanadu in, in Kashmir now. That's what he wants. So I think let's hope that happens soon. Sure, sir. You're driving me to the Kashmir. Absolutely. But you know, it, it has to be said, I mean, as a person, besides the fact that you travel for work and have shot across the world and in India as well, you travel a lot for leisure, you actually collect artifacts from places you go to. Where does that passion come from? Of course, I don't know where this comes from. Mm. Uh, because I'm not much into the art or the artifacts, but something that is meaningful and something that connects me to that city when I go back, I usually collect something and I, it remembers, it makes me remember of that country. And Europe has always been my favorite country. Now Japan has become my new favorite country. The culture, the people, it is a special country. I'll tell you why Japan, when we went to promote Araraj in uh, Japan, uh, it's huge in Japan. It was huge. We did uh, about 150 million in Japan. Mm. And I thank the Japanese audience. They are so, so warm. And it's in Japan. Why it's so, famous, so, so special to me is my, my wife is carrying right now. She's in her seventh month. And the magic happened in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so I will never forget Japan. And of course, to all the other G20 friends in the countries of Cambodia, each one are so special to India, the relationship with India, and especially film tourism. We all want to go and shoot in every country. All the countries are so so rich in their culture, and we as Indian actors and Indian film, we want to explore our culture and their culture. I want to see how these two cultures can come together and create a phenomenon which is the global cinema, not Indian cinema or any other country's cinema. I want to see a global cinema and with all your support, I think it, it can happen. You know, as Mr. Khan also said, I mean, Indian cinema is also one of the ways that Indians have accessed the world, right? And we've seen those places we wanted to go there. Um, to quote some recent examples, you can think of Turkey. A lot of people want to go to Turkey after they saw Turkey in, in the Directing Door, right? And all Indians went to London in the 90s after they saw the Bala Dhanamiya, everybody wanted to be there, right? Uh, which is the same thing as how everyone wanted to go to Goa after Dil Chata. Uh, other examples from your films where they've seen this and that's the country they wanted to go to. Or films that you've seen and because you've seen them, that's the country you want to go to. Come to India. <laughs> Please. This is, I mean, India is so vast and it's so untapped. I don't know, a lot of people, Mr. Kishan Jai Bilaru, my uh, Honourable Minister has uh, educated us about the vastness of India from the Thar Desert mm. and, uh, and, and the East and the mountains which is so, so vast and the South we have the beautiful culture, the God's own country, the Kerala backwaters, there are so many. I think I want to explore India more. Mm. I don't think I want to travel for my next couple of films unless the producer and director is from Hollywood. Right. <laughs> I want to stick to my culture, I want to stick here and I want to 
educate that our Indian sentiments are so strong, our culture is so strong, there is a lot of dignity in our stories. Nowadays when you see, it's not about South India, North Indian movies, it's about the Indian Mithika story. Our Desi stories are coming out finally and I'm sure that the other countries, when they see what is good, why should I go to an Indian cinema theatre? Why should I see an Indian cinema? Not to see what they've already experienced, they want to see what is India. And today our lovely directors are showing what is India on the silver screen. Which you have. And I think it might be fair to suggest that even without going to those countries, cinema is a great way for us to travel through our eyes. You don't need a passport, you don't need a plane ticket, you certainly don't need a visa. You can just watch a film and think that you've been to that country and that you've returned. And even cinema has played that role hugely, right? Now, one of the things is that which a lot of people don't realize is how many films we make in a year. And that it's not just films that are made in Mumbai. There are films made in Chennai, there are films made in Bangla, in, in Kolkata, there are films made down, you know, in the industry that you belong to, which is also the industry, you know, which is also the city where Mr. Reddy is from. Tell us a little more about the cinema that comes from Hyderabad. That's another book, that's another face that you are of uh, and have been for many years. How is firstly how is Indian mainstream cinema different from other cinemas? And how is cinema that comes from Hyderabad different from other mainstream cinemas in India? That's a very intense question. <laughs> we have the time in the world. No, I, I, I don't know if I have the knowledge to answer that. Okay. And, you have all the experience. Uh, yeah, I, I try to say yes. what I have mm -hmm. uh, from my experience. There are much better people, legends who can talk about this and give the right answer. This is one industry that has paid my EMIs, <laughs> which I grew up in, paid my bills, made me who I am, made my dad who he is, and the great legends we have in our country. It was for a long time not recognized as an industry, but today it is a film industry. And thank God it is. And uh, this film industry is something it is the best form of entertainment in India, which can make you forget of forget uh, make you forget of all the worries. Because India, with 1.8 billion people, we have 1.8 billion problems. These films we make in India, sometimes people don't connect in the West. They are like. Why are they dancing? Why are they fighting? Why are they dancing so much? But this is our culture. Every film industry, every country makes movies according to their culture. If you see Norwegian movies, Scandinavian movies, they are so beautiful. It's all about the green. It's about the ecosystem. And quiet. And quiet. And they're protecting the, 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 the ocean, they're protecting the vast land. And the West, you have some serious films, the critical films, critically acclaimed. In India, when you're happy, you dance in my house. <laughs> when you're sad, you dance. When you're not wanting, when you're wondering, what do I do? I still dance. So dance and song and dance is part of our culture. And that comes into the movie, fortunately or unfortunately. And we Indians love it. And aesthetically, when you shoot it in a nice way, I think the whole world will love it and that is an example why RRR was loved and why not not report the best song in the Academy. You know, I have to say for someone uh, watching uh, cinema from Hyderabad from a distance, I live in Mumbai, one of the things that intrigues me is the star system as well, right? For instance, uh, when I say Ramcharan, that's great, but I think if I said mega power star, everyone will get it. Uh, your father, the great Chiranjeevi, is called the mega star. Uh, your uncle, Pawan Kajan, is called the power star. So you become the mega power star. Firstly, tell me where where do these names come from? How are these decided? Is it is there a committee that decides? Okay, now we call them mega and power because father and uncle. Not at all. It comes from the love of people, mm. and uh, it comes from the fans who love us, and it's because of them we are all sitting here and enjoying this life. And they have different ways of calling us. Mm. Sometimes they say Anna, they say Bhai to Salman, mm. to my dad they say 
Chiru, Megastar. It's, it's all coming when you are bringing with lots of emotions and your the volcanic uh, in, uh, the reaction comes. They just have a way to call you. That's it. It's, it's just coming from the love of the audience. And you know, you've also grown up with that love, watching the world around you love your father so much. Uh, Chiranjeevi, uh, Hiru as fans also call him, uh, and Megastar as well. Is it tough to be so illustrious? I mean, we talk about, you know, nepotism and blah, blah, but it's actually tougher when you have to live up to something so huge. Uh, it's hard to grow up under a band tree usually. Was that tough for you or is it still tough for you? Uh, yeah. It was very difficult as a child because uh, I could not get out of my house when I wanted. I could not sneak out of my house. I could not sneak out in the night, right. go with my friends. So that's difficult. Okay. Apart from that... Because everyone knows you. They, they I saw you there. But there are so many people in the house, you just cannot sneak out of your house. Okay. Take your dad's car and drive into the road. Right. Uh, jokes apart, I think uh, it's only a pleasure. It was never a pleasure for me. It was only a pleasure to be born. And I think I work best under pressure. Okay. And uh, that pressure was my motivation. Waking up till today, my dad is 68 years. He has signed about four films. Wow. He's one of the highest paid actors now at 68. He's giving us a challenge. He wakes up at 5.30 still and works out, goes out. Even one day if I'm feeling lazy, I'm like, man, I need to get up. So it is a lot of stress to be a son. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not a single day I can rest. But I'm glad I have a family like this, and an audience like this that are looking forward for our work. And henceforth, thanks to our that the world has really embraced us mm. from Korea, Japan, uh, LA, and the East and the West. Everybody has really embraced us. It's more of a, a responsibility now. Mm. It's not just my being dad's son, right. it's being the world's actor, mm. global actor. It just doesn't come and sit on your shoulder just like that. You have to work for it. I can lose this. Opportunity. I can lose this charm even tomorrow if I don't work for it. Every single day I have to wake up and say I have to give something back to all my fans who have appreciated my work, who have embraced our films, who have embraced Indian films. If not now, there's no other time. Now is the time. We have to do it for the world, for the world cinema. You know, in 2009 when you made Magadira uh, with uh, S.M. Rajamuri, the fantastic <coughs> director, a star director now, um, that was the biggest commercial success in Telugu cinema at the time. And then you took that leap with the same director with Aragar, which is the biggest global success we've had from Indian cinema. How did that leap happen? I mean, we're looking from a film made for one region, largely, to a film that the world... I mean, was there a leap in terms of imagination? Was there a leap in terms of the, the, the budgets went up because Baubali uh, was already made by Rajamal before? How does this big leap happen or are we just... In the right place, the right time in India's history, everything's going to be big time. You're right. I think we were in the right place at the right time. I wish we knew the world will embrace us. Then the budgets would have been much better. My salary, my, my regulation, my salary would have been better. Right. But no, we didn't. We just was making a very straightforward Indian emotional, uh, uh, emotional Indian subject, a rooted subject. And I feel, how come? It was a friend of mine who was asking me, how come around the West or the East like our Indian emotion? I said, there is the answer. An emotion doesn't have any language. An emotion doesn't have any color. Emotion is emotion. You feel it, you enjoy it, you love it, and you embrace it. I think that's what my directors have always cracked it, and my director, my special director, Raj Moliga, has cracked it even better than anybody else. And we paved the path for all the other directors to say, wish for it, imagine it, dream for it, and the world is at, at, at your call and at your feet. I do not say feet, but yeah, at, at your disposal. Well, you're on the screen, so you could get the peak. You're looking up on the big screen, and it's almost uh, in that distance. Uh, you're also a producer, Ram. 
and I think this is a great opportunity for you and this is the final word I want you to have uh, coming back to films and tourism. You're sitting with some of the top stakeholders in films and television uh, on, on tourism. If you were, to, and, and a policy is also going to be announced, if you were to be your wish list as a producer, as a filmmaker on things that everyone should do to make sure uh, that films and tourism are promoted simultaneously, what would your advice or your wish list be to all these people who are sitting here? I mean, this event, this event that is happening right now is an example, it's a great example. We all used to dream of an event like this, where all our friends, all the G22, uh, G20 friends come to our country and learn our country and uh, experience our cuisine, experience our colors, experience our festivals, experience everything about India. And today, thanks to Sri Narendra Modi ji, our Prime Minister, who made it happen. And along with him, all the great ministers, Kishan ji, and all the other dignitaries who made it and paused, made it possible, we could not imagine this. Mr. Shaker, this never happened. Mm. It happened now. So we should appreciate it. And I think India, you don't have to talk about India. India is so vast, it is spoken. I think there's a lot said about India, there's a lot seen about India. I think just come and experience it. It will be a beautiful, beautiful experience. And I promise you, please go back home and bring all your family and friends. I promise you, you will never regret it. I'm going to end this conversation on the most important question uh, to be asked, honestly speaking. Uh, this is something that everyone who's here one really wants to know from you. What does Natu Natu mean? <laughs> My knees <name is> wobbly. <laughs> what do these two words mean? mean? Yes. Should I get uh, very emotional about it or should I be... Nice and First, get dictionary about it. Huh? What does it mean? Because not you know, to not to what meanings are even online. Like. Not to not to Telugu means. They first said dance, dance, but apparently not. Kishan Gar means Telugu. Not to. That is a raw. It's a raw. It's right. rural. It's 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 the flavor of your city or your country. It not to not to. But in Hindi, it means not. Natural, 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 nat